Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Cody Townsend and this here is Josh Dyack. We're with the Solomon team. And today we're gonna to be doing a little how-to on what's in our backpacks for backcountry ski touring. Josh is gonna take you through what is in his pack when he's going off the side of the ski area into the backcountry. So kind of your slack country day, maybe one, maybe two laps out in the backcountry from the ski area. And me, I'm gonna be going through my backpack for bigger days, sun up to sun down, maybe getting into the Alpine, maybe going onto a glacier, some of the kind of bigger days that you'll see in say the 50 project. Hey guys, Josh Dyack here. As Cody mentioned, I'm gonna be showing you what goes in my pack if we're doing a tour off the resort. So to start, we always got our essentials. Gonna have the beacon that you have on you, of course, but I thought I'd mention that. Then we got our shovel and probe. First and foremost, we gotta have our safety gear. Along those same lines, I like to have a first aid kit with me. Um, you never know what's going to happen. I like to hope for the best, plan for the worst. So I always got uh, this kit with me. And then I've also got a multi-tool that's got uh, some pliers and different ends on it. So you can make adjustments on skis and jerry-rig something together if you need to. Along those same lines, I carry a lot of ski straps. Ski straps can be helpful in tons of ways from rigging broken bindings to uh, used in safety and rescue techniques. So I like to keep a grip full of these straps. They've saved me more than once. So that's a super important item to have. Along those same lines, got some duct tape. Uh, just got a little bit here wrapped around a pencil or a pen or something as an easy way to go, keep it small and light. I've also got the scraper. I always have a scraper on me. Um, Whenever you're in the backcountry, it's inevitable you're gonna get ice build up on your edges or on your skins or something else. So I always have a scraper. Um, along those same lines, I got wax. I've got two waxes in this bag. I've got a skin wax in case you're going from cold snow to hot snow to cold snow and you get that clump in, you can remove the wax off your skins. And I've also got ski wax, just in case skin glue is left on your skis, you can rub some wax on and hopefully your day is not ruined. Keep moving. Also, I got a sunscreen stick. When you're out there in the sun and in the elements, it's good to have like a good zinc stick to kind of protect your face and skin and your eyeballs. I got some sunglasses here. I also keep ibuprofen just in case someone gets injured. It does reduce swelling and can help with pain. So you can hopefully manage the pain and get out of the back country and get to help. Got a headlamp just cause you never know. A uh, quick tour could turn into a late night and you never know what's gonna be, happen out there so it's good to be prepared and have a light with you. Uh, along those same lines I've always got snacks, extra snacks on me. These are things that I always keep in my pack uh, whether I'm eating it that day or not. I just always have extra food and supplies in my pack so if you get hungry you got it. Um, other things I always carry an extra buff because if you're hiking and it's snowing, your buff gets wet, goes down and starts getting your under layers wet. So I like to carry an extra buff to keep dry. Staying dry is kind of the most important thing to me when I'm in the back country. I always carry extra goggles and lenses just because light changes or if you do happen to crash and your lenses get thrashed, then it's nice to have an extra pair so you can see. Um, I've always got three pairs of gloves on me. I've got my thin gloves for hiking because when you're hiking and it's, you're starting to sweat, you don't want to get your other gloves wet and then you got frozen gloves with you all day. So I like to try and keep my hiking gloves as my hiking gloves, let these get wet. And then when you get to the top, you can put on nice dry gloves, warm gloves. And so I always keep my super warm mitts with me too, just in case it gets cold and if it gets cold, I always got the puffy too, because you never know. Like I said, sometimes a couple hour tour, you find yourself out there in the dark and when it gets dark, it gets cold quick. So better safe than sorry. Uh, another super important item is the radio. So it's important to keep in touch with your buddies. If you make a wrong turn, you want to be able to be, talk to them, say, hey, where'd you guys go? I'm over here. Radio is super important, staying in touch, knowing where everyone's at. 
And also important is water. I like using the collapsible water pouch. So you can have up to two liters of water and then as you drink it throughout the day, fold it down, packs to nothing. So these are kind of the basics that I have with me almost every day, but for a smaller tour off the resort, this is gonna get you out there for a safe, fun day. What I'm gonna go into is what is in my pack for bigger days. So maybe starting out in the dark and getting home in the dark, maybe spending 12 hours hiking up and down the same slope or going for some big objectives into alpine terrain, uh, maybe into some glaciers too. So um, the thing is what Josh explained to you is not gonna be too much different than what I explained to you because the fact is if you're in the back country, there's a lot of basics to bring out there. So this equipment that Josh talked about is pretty much gonna be in my kit, of course. First aid kits, avalanche gear, food, gloves, layers, all that. You're gonna to wanna to bring that no matter what style of day is gonna be your backcountry day. And then we're gonna talk about some of the extra little things that I will bring in case of a longer day. Um, the only thing I wanna point out when it comes to a little bit more differentiation between a long day and a short day is you're gonna to wanna to bring more food, obviously. Um, the other thing you're gonna to wanna to bring is more water. So most of my touring days, I bring like two liters. And if I'm gonna be out there all day, three upwards of four. So you can fill this whole thing up. It's gonna weigh a lot, but you're gonna be happy that you're not thirsty. Um, the other thing I'll bring safety wise is a satellite transponder. This kind of thing, a bivy stick or an in reach, they're gonna be your only ways to communicate outside of where you're at. So you can send an SOS message, you can text with your loved ones, uh, check in with them. Uh, you can even check the weather. So these things are very essential for those long days. Other optional equipment that you might wanna have are things like a snow saw. So if you're gonna be digging a pit out there to check the stability um, while you're out in the zone, having a snow saw can be very useful or having a, a Roche block cord. They're kind of very similar things. Um, I like to bring a Roche block cord more than a snow saw just because I can do the same thing for digging a pit with a Roche block cord, but I also can maybe cut a cornice to check the stability of a slope. These things are quite useful and as you can tell, they're very light and compact. Another thing I like to bring out there is toilet paper and a lighter. So obviously if nature calls, you can help you with that. It's also if you need to build a little fire, you got some fire starter right there. Um, when I start to go into these longer days, quite often that means going into glaciated terrain or going into the Alpine. So I'm gonna go through a little bit of that equipment that is necessary for that style of day. Um, the first thing you're gonna want is of course your harness. Uh, it's the only way to make a rope and all the systems work is to be able to attach yourself to a rope. The only way to attach yourself to a rope is with a harness. Um, when I'm going on the glaciers, I like to bring some sort of glacier kit. So what's in this kit is a 30 meter rope, six millimeters wide, and it's a static line. These are the kind of lines you need for crossing crevasses or in case of crevasse rescue. These kind of kits are made by a few different companies like Mammut, and what they, they come with all the necessary gear for glacier travel. So make it easy for you, just get a glacier kit. The other thing for glacier train you absolutely need is uh, at least one ice axe. So four glaciers, an ice axe is gonna be there for self-arrest. It can be there to uh, d dig an anchor to in case of a rescue. Um, if I'm going up onto steeper trains, sometimes I will bring two, but I'd say 80% of the time, one is enough. Things get a little steeper, a little more hard pack, I'm gonna bring crampons. So my crampons are in this bag all folded up and useful. Uh, crampons look like they're something really cool and for technical stuff only. And in reality, they make all climbing and hard snow conditions that much more easy, more efficient and far safer. Uh, crampons are incredibly useful and they make climbing kind of fun. Um, the other thing I'll bring in addition to the puffy that Josh talked about, I like to bring some puffy pants. So these are really small and lightweight. And the, the reason why I bring these is if you're gonna be spending the night out there, you're gonna want something that to really keep warm, uh, especially if you're gonna be sitting in the snow and having this extra few ounces of puffy pants uh, in your pack could be the difference between having a miserable night and being a night that's not so bad. Um, otherwise, 
that's about it. We're probably the same kit that Josh brings out there for a normal short day in the backcountry is uh, not much different than what you're going to bring for a long day. So I hope you learned something today. And if you do feel like we missed anything, make sure to comment below and we'll do our best to answer. Also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button because we're going to be dropping more videos and more learning through this channel. Otherwise, hope to see you in the mountains soon.